today we will discuss the phase diagram of two component systems. Two component systems can be of many types like liquid liquid phases, liquid vapor phases. liquid solid phases and gas solid phases. In this course, we will consider only the phase diagram of, of two component system of liquid liquid phases. So, we will consider only liquid liquid phases. When a simple alcohol is added to water, these two liquids are completely miscible in any proportion okay, and they form a homogeneous solution. But suppose we add water to nitrobenzene or we add nitrobenzene to water, they are not miscible in all proportions. So, they are immiscible or partially miscible. Okay. So, when two partially miscible liquids, suppose A and B. are brought together in appreciable amount suppose huh? in appreciable amount So, we have to we get rather two saturated solutions in two layers, they will form layer because they are partially miscible. Okay. So, we get two saturated sol uh, solutions in two layers, one in one of A in B and another B in A at equilibrium. these two solutions are, are described as conjugate solutions. Okay. So, here we will consider uh, systems with uh, liquid liquid phases, we will consider three different systems. First we start with water phenol system. So, in water phenol system what we do here actually we plot 
ok we plot temperature versus weight percent of phenol ok. So, note here it is convenient to study this kind of system under normal atmospheric pressure. So, it is considered that the normal or external atmospheric pressure is, is much much higher than the vapor pressure of both the components here. Okay. Now, if we look this temperature uh, versus weight percent of phenol as I mentioned here that pressure is constant here. So, at constant pressure we are dealing with here. So, here dealing with at constant P. constant p remember that ok so a b curve if you look at this a b curve it represents the solubility of phenol in water ok because we have more water here ok and it it gives the percentage of phenol dissolved in water at at different temperatures so if we increase the temperature solubility increases Okay, you can see that. On the other hand, if we add a small amount of water in large amount of phenol, okay, so we get water in phenol system okay, and this C B this curve represents that. Okay. So, what we discuss now? Here A B point one for this curve we, we infer that a b is the solubility curve of phenol in water. It gives or it shows the percentage of phenol dissolved in water at different temperatures. Okay. On the other hand, when water is added water is added to phenol slowly small amount of water are immediately dissolved, okay. but when the amount of added water is enhanced or increased is increased the limit of saturation is reached huh? the limit of saturation is reached ok and and water forms a separate layer ok water 
forms a separate layer. So, two layers we get. Okay. The solubility curve of water in phenol is is shown by C B and we can see that if we increase temperature the solubility of water in phenol increases. Okay. Now, we consider a particular temperature suppose 40 degree Celsius. Okay. So, if we consider 40 degree Celsius temperature here the temperature is, is given in Celsius okay, in this plot. Okay. So, suppose we consider for a fixed temperature for a given temperature of 40 degree Celsius, at point x, if you see the phase diagram at point x, Okay. water and phenol are miscible. And they form a homogeneous solution. The form of homogeneous. So, they have so at, at point x we have only a single phase. Okay. So, T equals to 1 at point x. Okay. So, what is the degree, what is the number of degrees of freedom there? So, f is c minus p here it is plus 1 because we have kept pressure constant here. Okay. So, how many components are there? we have two components and we have one phase and then plus one. So, we get two. So, so point in, so this is bivariant. Okay. Now, if we, so this is suppose for A, for B, if we fix the temperature, at the same 40 degree Celsius and keep on adding phenol starting from point x. Okay, starting from points, whatever composition we had at point x, from that composition if we start adding phenol, if we add phenol, okay, so what we get? We reach point L 1. Okay. So, we reach point L 1 at we reach point L 1 and after that Okay. 
further addition of phenol further addition of phenol gives rise to gives rise to two separate layers. Okay. What are those layers? Two separate layers. What are those layers? One layer is water in phenol layer, water in phenol and phenol in water. So, we get two different layers, two separate layers phenol in water. Okay. So, if we see so the left of L 1 represents homogeneous solution and the right of L 1 indicate is the existence of heterogeneous systems of two different phases. Okay. So, so it says as I, as I mentioned what I what I said is the left of point L 1 1 homogeneous solution and the right of point L 1 is 2 phases or heterogeneous system we get. Okay. So, this a b a b is nothing but. So, this says a b is the boundary between homogeneous and heterogeneous conditions right now if we consider right of point L 1. So, for right of point L 1, F is C minus P plus 1 here is C and 2 component 2 phase S and 1. So, number of degrees of freedom is 1 there. Okay. Now, point number 5 is if we see the plot again, okay, if we start from point Y similar explanation similar explanation can be given if we start from point y and keep on adding 
keep on adding water okay, at fixed temperature of 40 degree Celsius. Means, if we start from point y and if we keep on adding water, we will reach at point L 2, the right side of point L 2 is nothing but a homogeneous system and the left side of L 2 is a heterogeneous system of two phases right now so any point within the area abc corresponds to heterogeneous phase and any point outside ABC corresponds to homogeneous space. Okay. So, at 40 degree Celsius suppose if we take a mixture of 50 percent water and 50 percent phenol and if we shake it and if we allow them to settle, we will get two conjugate solutions. Okay. So, one layer will be having composition as at L 1 and the other layer with composition as at L 2. Okay. So, what I said is at 40 degree Celsius, if we sec a mixture of 50 percent water and 50 percent phenol and then allow them to settle okay we get two conjugate solutions okay one layer having composition as at L 1 and another layer having composition as at L 2 okay. and that is represented by C there O. Okay. So, if we take this O that composition mixture 50 percent um, water and 50 percent phenol and if we shake them and if we allow them to settle. Okay. So, we get two layers okay. one will be having composition as that of L at point L 1 and another one as that of point L 2. Okay. Next, now suppose we take a composition of 33 percent. Okay. So, suppose 
we take okay we take thirty three percent of phenol okay and sixty seven percent water okay this is point number eight and 67 percent water and we shake them then allow them to settle we get two layers okay when temperature is below 66 degree Celsius. Okay. That is your that we had uh, what we are discussing is the dotted line now. Okay. So, temperature is below 66. So, above 66 degree okay. we get a homogeneous solution. Okay. So, what I wanted to say here is it is evident that any temperature above that of point B water and phenol are completely miscible in all proportions. Okay. So, although we consider 33 percent phenol and 67 percent water, but you take any uh, proportion and you keep on increasing the temperature above 66 degree Celsius, these two liquids are completely miscible with each other in all proportions. Okay. This temp the temperature, the temperature above which the complete miscibility in all proportions takes place is called or is known as upper consolute upper consolute temperature or critical solution temperature or CST. Okay. The temperature above which the complete miscibility in all proportions takes place is known as upper consolute temperature or critical solution temperature. If for water phenol system, this 
the value of CST is 66 degree Celsius. Now, we have we considered one uh, system for which we got upper consolute temperature. Is it possible to have a lower consolute temperature means the temperature below which uh, two liquids will be completely miscible with each other? Yes, there is a system we are, we are going to consider next. Okay. So, next, next we consider water triethyl amine system. Okay. So, here we are again we plotted temperature versus percentage of triethyl amine. Okay. Again at constant pressure we consider at constant P we consider. Okay. So, what do you observe here? Like before we can draw few conclusions from the above phase diagram. First is A B, the curve A B is the solubility curve of tri ethyl amine in water and C B is the solubility curve of water in triethyl amine. Okay. Number 3, okay. in both cases the solubility decreases with increasing temperature. Point number 4. Okay. The solubility curve the solubility curves becomes almost horizontal at about eighteen point five degrees Celsius. Okay, and and they practically merge at this temperature. Okay, now, as in previous example like water phenol example, okay, any point within the area A B C corresponds corresponds to to heterogeneous phase 
heterogeneous system. Okay, so, we get two layer inside A B C. Okay. Point number 6. Any point outside A B C corresponds to corresponds to homogeneous system. And most importantly below the temperature of that of point B, the two liquid the two liquids are miscible in all proportions. Okay. So, this system, this system has a lower consolute temperature. or critical solution temperature. Okay. So, this system means this water triethyl amine system, it has a lower consolute temperature in this case is 18.5 degree Celsius. So, so far we have considered two systems for which in case of first system we have obtained the upper consolute temperature and for water triethyl amine system we have seen that there is a lower consolute temperature. Okay. Now, can we have a system which is having both upper and lower consolute temperatures? Yes, so that that is what we are going to discuss now. So, we consider now what are nicotine system. Okay. Again, we consider at constant pressure. Okay. So, we plotted temperature versus percentage of nicotine here. Okay. So, here what we what we see we can we summarize like the mutual solubility BT curve means what are in nicotine and nicotine in water is a closed one right that we see closed one having both an upper critical solution temperature and a lower critical solution temperature above 208 degree Celsius and 
below 61 degree Celsius, water and nicotine are or nicotine liquids are completely miscible in all proportions. And these are these are upper critical solution temperature and lower critical solution temperature. Okay. In between these two temperatures, with appreciable appreciable amounts of the components we get to conjugate solutions. Okay. So, in between or within the car within the closed area we get two layers above 208 degree Celsius and below 61 degree Celsius water and nicotine are completely miscible with each other. Thank you.